Greetings. My name is Hiram Anderson, and my talk today addresses the tangible gap between researchers and practitioners when it comes to securing machine learning. And today, I hope that you will come away with two main takeaways. One, that security of machine learning has become an information security problem. But number two, that there are simple things that you and I can do today to secure ML that have much more in common with traditional security practice than ingesting and implementing papers, important as they are, from the latest machine learning conferences. Let me begin by demonstrating what I think is a fundamental paradigm mismatch. Many encapsulate their understanding of machine learning security by adversarial examples, illustrated here by these two now cliche pictures of a tabby cat. Subtle changes to the image on the right cause a machine learning model to classify the tabby cat as guacamole. This has come to iconify intentional or adversarial failure modes of modern machine learning, whether an attacker, um, when an attacker presents specific worst case conditions to render sometimes silly, but sometimes critical machine learning model failures. The research field has been around for more than a decade, but just in the last few years, researchers have written more than 2000 papers about the weaknesses and proposed defenses for machine learning under attack. Meanwhile, security professionals are dealing with things like solar winds, software updates and SSL patches, phishing and education, ransomware, and cloud credentials that you just checked into GitHub. And they're left to wonder what in the world does the security of a tabby cat have to do with the security problems that I'm facing today? So it should come as no surprise that the state of security of ML is relatively low. As my colleagues at Microsoft discovered in a recent survey of organizations, awareness or at least the priority of the security risks to ML is low. It was judged as too futuristic, and when, especially when compared with the pressing traditional security threats. Uh, number two, even as ML researchers advance the state of our understanding, there are still fundamental theory gaps about what makes ML secure. As a result, our collective security posture is close to zero. In the Microsoft survey I referenced, it was found that almost 90%, 25 of 20 organizations spoken to did not know how to secure their ML systems. That is a risk that's especially applicable to non-security applications of, of ML for which adversaries can cause magnified security risks uh, in, in domains especially where people aren't thinking about security first. Indeed, as a, a recent study pointed out, uh, machine learning presents a new attack surface that application leaders must anticipate to mitigate those risks. To demonstrate some of the lowest hanging ML security risks, today I will walk you through parts of a red team engagement that my team and I participated in at Microsoft. I hope you welcome the fact that mature companies like Microsoft should and do conduct red team exercises against their own products and services, including ML. Before I begin, it's important to make a distinction between an adversarial ML attack tree in which subverting the ML model is the end objective and a red teaming attack tree where the ML model is merely a cog in a system and that system has far greater ramifications than that ML model alone. For example, if an adversary wanted to commit expense fraud, she could do this by digitally altering real receipts to fool an automated system, similar to the tabby cat and guacamole example. However, a much easier thing to do is to simply submit valid receipts to the automated system that do not represent legitimate business expenses. So in some cases, an ML model or the data may indeed be the crown jewels. But as you can see in this example, securing an ML model is often only one part of securing against a broader attack. And in my view, it makes the most sense to think about 
ML security as part of, not separate from the broader security concerns. When it comes to red teaming, when an ML model is involved, there are a number of touch points where we now taking an attacker perspective can cause confidentiality, integrity, or availability concerns, violations. During any phase before model deployment, uh, data curation and labeling, feature extraction, model training and model validation, there's at least an opportunity for both access to private data and to, to make causative effect on the model, causative attacker influence, such as model poisoning or model backdooring. Those would require, of course, kind of write permissions to the model data or training code. Uh, when a model is deployed after that deployment, it is still subject to integrity violations uh, through model evasion, like the tabby cat example, or confidentiality violations through, through model, model stealing and model inversion. Interestingly, if a, a model pipeline leverages feedback as part of its data collection process, an attack can affect a, a, a causative influence without those so-called right permissions to the model development cycle. As you'll see in our red team engagement case study in the following slides, being familiar with the ML development lifecycle presents opportunities to cause change, changes to the system. And from a defender's perspective, you should think about securing these separate distinct phases. For the case study, let's look at an exercise against an internal Microsoft cloud provisioning service that uses ML to take automated actions. Whether or not cloud security, uh, cloud provision, uh, cloud provisioning is your cup of tea, I think this example will uh, demonstrate similar security principles of a system that you might know more intimately. In this system, a web portal request for an internal software resource like a database of a certain size or a virtual machine with specified memory and CPU is processed by this large system that decides which physical hardware the resources should occupy. As you can imagine, due to the number, the sheer number of employees at a large company like Microsoft, using these logical resources and their underlying physical hardware, the, the savings achieved by efficiently mapping resources to hardware is, is not insignificant. In our red team engagement, we took the role of an adversary who wished to cause uh, an indiscriminate denial of service attack through a so-called noisy neighbor attack. <clears throat> by tricking the system to deploy hungry resources on physical hardware that contained high availability service containers. As you'll see, evading the ML model uh, part of this is a linchpin for this exercise. So that the, the question is by asking for just the right services, could we cause a system availability violation by causing an ML integrity violation for an inner machine learning service project, uh, pr uh, an, an inner ML uh, service. And importantly, uh, at no point do we have direct access to the model. Uh, it's only accessible through uh, internal private API. So let's walk through uh, the details of uh, the red team attack on this internal service. And in this exercise, we begin with insider access through a valid account. As an attacker now on the inside, we kind of knew from a reconnaissance phase what we were looking for. From external publications we had read, we knew that there was a resource provisioning service that used machine learning. And we also knew that uh, an ML model would have artifacts like training data, a model file. And as a red team, we were we found we found ourselves extremely lucky to find that our credentials gave us access to two critical pieces of this internal ML model. First, we discovered that we had read-only access to some data, some of which turned out to be training data to the model we cared about. A second, 
uh, though we didn't find any uh, detailed code for the entire model pipeline, we did discover key pieces for the data collection featureization. And that alone was enough for us to uh, create our own model, even before discovering uh, any internal API access to that part of the system. So this was much easier and more reliable uh, as a process than um, maybe using a sophisticated black box model stealing algorithm against the inter internal service. Instead, we could get access to data and code and build our own model. As it turns out, um, anyway, the direct access to that model would have proved to be more difficult. So uh, with that, uh, even though even though we've built a now a, a, a poor man, a straw man replica model um, that's likely not identical to the production model, it did allow us to study as a straw man and formulate and test an attack strategy offline. This is important because we didn't know what kind of logging and monitoring and auditing would have been attached to the deployed model service, even, even if we had uh, direct access to it. So we could do, do all that in a way uh, that was, um, we thought could be blind to any observers. So by conducting the offline attack of the replica model, we collected a number of evasive variants, that is inputs to the inner machine learning model that would guarantee an oversubscribe prediction. In particular, we discovered what services we could provision, uh, VMs with what specs, database types, of what size and replication factors, at what times of day and days of the week, and under what conditions that this model would predict our model to be a, a friendly, low resource container to be oversubscribed with high confidence. So those inputs that we collected turned out to be uh, the, you know, the linchpin for the entire engagement. And we collected them for later use so that we could create a new account. And then with that account, we could use inputs previously discovered to request resources and deploy these so-called noisy neighbors um, with a payload. And this is often the case in machine learning, even though we attack a straw man, there's a good chance that those, uh, the, the inputs to that straw man model are also effective to the live deployed model, at least for a window of time before retraining. So with having those resource requests that would guarantee an oversubscribed condition, we could then instrument a virtual machine, for example, with, um, with actually, uh, hungry resource payloads, high CPU utilization and, and memory usage, which would then be over-provisioned and cause a denial of service to the other containers on the same physical host. I'll note that this exercise uh, was recently summarized and published by colleagues in an adversarial ML threat matrix, which I am citing here at the top that I encourage you to go look at, uh, check out. To summarize, Again, to recap, like any red team operation, it included reconnaissance, initial access, and had striking similarities to uh, adversary activity on any IT system. There was exfiltration, evasion, and execution finally ending up with the impact of service availability. But there are several lessons to glean that can be extrapolated from this exercise. Number one, internal models are not safe by default. That is an argument that is simply, uh, again, security by obscurity in disguise. Even though a model may not be directly accessible to the outside world, there are paths by which an attacker can exploit them to cause cascading downstream effects in an overall system. Number two, permissive access to data or code can lead to simple model data theft. And this seems really simp simple, but um, ask your data science team, uh, if they are, uh, you know, how they, how they set up permissions around their data and their code. Who cares about algorithmic model inversion when an attacker could more easily just replicate your model and, and do it more precisely by exploiting the lack of simple security hygiene, like setting up access controls that are not over permissive. Number three, 
In a system design, carefully check the model output before taking pres prescriptive actions. Um, what what is a what is that um, that sanity check? It could be a human in a loop in some cases, maybe auditing one out of every thousand outputs, or it could be um, in a system like mid for automation, like the one uh, that uh, we we've, we've described. It could be uh, simple sanity checks and, and guardrails, like you should never oversubscribe a 24 core VM, no matter what the model predicts. It's important also to, uh, as number four, important to log model uh, behavior and development during training and deployment. Even if there's no active uh, program or person monitoring those logs in real time, we should always have an assume breach mindset where having access to those logs could be critical in a post-mortem breach analysis. So that one could ask, um, you know, one could ask, are there any unusual volume spikes in my request activity? Are there any new users or new IP addresses interacting with my model at this time? Are there any interesting inputs or interesting outputs? Just to dive a little bit deeper on that point, um, no matter what, you may be logging right now uh, health monitoring checks to see if your ML service is alive. Add to that some simple things and add to it at all phases of this uh, machine learning development pipeline. During the training phases, you can use data set versioning that includes a hash of your entire data set. So you can easily check to see if it's been changed since last time you trained. You can include uh, hashes in, your, in the, the binary of your model, the model weights, to know if that has changed substantially. You can, um, you can check uh, with hashes also whether your model prediction or uh, invalidation or training, if those predictions have changed. Um, at telemetry time, uh, inference telemetry logs are incredibly useful as I'll demonstrate, but you can log simple things like a timestamp the model idea, what, what model is being uh, logged here, who's interacting with the model, if there's a user ID or a client IP address. And then again, what, what are sort of the inputs and outputs and for preserving privacy, those can be hashes or simple, simple score outputs that just give you a rough feel of what's happening with your model. Because data can actually tell you a lot without knowing hardly anything about uh, this plot you can tell that there's something different that happens at query number, I think, 1,000. So um, this, the x-axis here represents uh, time, the query number, and the y-axis is simply the output of a model that is giving a binary decision, a one or a zero, and a, a, a score for that, numbers between zero and one. And um, if, you, if you see nothing else, you see that once a, an algorithmic attack begins, you can see characteristics of an algorithm interacting with your model. And that already could be um, uh, interesting data in a post uh, more breach analysis. To conclude, ML risk is outpacing ML security. And while researchers are doing important work on that front, there are important bare minimum things that we should all do today. It starts with robust traditional security postures that include access controls, permissions, logging and auditing, but it doesn't end there. We should have an active mindset. How will you respond when your machine learning model is duped? First, how will you know when it is attacked? How will you ascertain a root cause of an adversarial failure mode? Was it due to poisoning? Was it due to a, a runtime evasion attack? When your model is exploited, what is the blast radius of that? Um, how many other systems does, does it affect and how can you reduce that foot, footprint? Um, and if nothing else, if you do nothing but think more like an adversary uh, based on what we've talked about today, I think you're well on your way. I'll conclude where I began. ML security is an information security problem. In simple infosec hygiene, at least today, is at least half the battle. So the same infosec hygiene and precautions you would take with any other software system, you would keep your user's data private and protected. You would audit software dependencies and vulnerabilities for vulnerabilities. 
you would validate inputs to your system and you would make sure you'd make every effort to keep your source code and your other intellectual property secure. Let's make absolutely sure that at each step of that machine learning development life cycle, that we're securing machine learning models using at least those same precautions. Thank you.